What's up, everybody, and welcome back to A Beer and A with TK. It's a frigid evening here in Finley, Ohio, and Anderson and I are hanging out in the shed, getting ready to check out a new beer. What's going on, Anderson? Well, it is pretty cold out here in the beer shed, and we've been out here for quite a while getting in some videos, mm. and your wife has now sent the dog out to retrieve us. Yeah, my dog is running around out here, Roxy the Boxer. And part of the problem with that is the dog has opened the door to the beer shed, it's so whatever cool. little heat we had left has now... Exited the building. So we're going to get this video in. And then we're going to go inside. That's right. So this beer is called Elefino. And it's a double IPA. And this is from Red Rock Brewing out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Now, what do we know about the title on this bad boy? So according to Untapped, it first starts off, Hoppy Citrusy Resinous Elephant, in quotation marks, was the original name of our hop-centric flagship ale. A certain mass-producing lager brewery in Denmark with a beer of the same name. Carlsberg, we're looking at you. Allegedly. Maybe. Stripped our double IPA of the elephant title. A group of frustrated Red Rock staff was tasked with finding a new name. Story has it, someone said, what on earth are we going to name this beer? Another replied, hell if I know. The misheard hell if I know was a unanimous choice. Mm. So I dig that, man. Look, they got challenged by Carlsberg, and they came back and said, we going to do our thing. Elefino, right? Right. I think I might have done a video on Elephant back in the day. It's crap. It's like... So I don't know if you've had many or any beers from Utah or Salt Lake. There's one. Who's the one brewery out of Utah? There's one that's like a macro-esque one that I'm not a fan of. That's about it. I, I don't see many. And for those of you that aren't familiar with, with Salt Lake or, or Utah, it's a very uh, religious Mormon area. Sure. And they have some of the more strict alcohol, alcohol laws, laws yeah. in the country. Yeah. Now, up until... 2019, we were reading. 2019. Yeah. It was really hard to find anything other than 3.2%. ABV beer. Which is mouthwash. Or European. Mm. Or Bud Light. Yeah, well, I mean, in, in England, a lot of the beers is only in the 3 5 region, but you know, very low ABV. Um, so very strict control, huh? Very strict control there. Mm. And then, 2019, they passed law, a new law, allowing you to get up to 5% alcohol beers Ooh. everywhere, including grocery stores. Ah, okay. Which is pretty cool. Now, I'm from Pennsylvania. I mean, we had some very restrictive laws. Like, you can only buy beer from beer distributors, or you could, like, drastically overpay for a six-pack at a bar or something. But even then, you couldn't get it on Sundays. I mean, a lot of places had what we used to call, I mean, they're called blue laws, right? Their old right. religious laws are in place to, I guess, stop us from drinking on the Lord's Day or whatever it might be. But Now, one of the, one of the strange things is, still, even with the new laws, you can have beers up to 5%. If you want, and you can buy those in grocery stores, convenience stores, whatever, or your bar, draft beer can still only be up to 5%. Mm. Now, I don't know if that includes draft beers at breweries. Yeah. That's a gray area in my, in my knowledge. However, you can get other alcohol, higher alcohol beers, like this one, which is 8%, mm. but you can only buy them at the state liquor stores. Oh. Now, if a bar or a brewery wants to serve you a beer that's higher than, than 5%, they can only serve it to you in its original container. Now, we should preface this by saying Anderson is not a lawyer and is not giving legal advice in the state of Utah or anywhere else. So don't sue us, Utah. Or I am not an expert on the alcohol laws of Utah, but it's still interesting. Do you know my frame of reference for the alcohol laws of Utah? Let me guess. The great movie SLC Punk. Exactly. In SLC Punk, if anybody's ever seen that, it's one of the best movies ever made. I absolutely love it. Matt Lillard and his, his buddies there go up to Wyoming to buy regular old beer. I mean, anything above whatever the limit was back then. I'm imagining 3.2. 3.2, yeah. <laughs> so they have to go to another state to buy it, right? Which is really kind of odd. Uh, so 8% from Utah. And for the old hats that might watch us from way back when, in America, was it 70s and the early 80s maybe, they had what was called near beer. 
And near beer, I think, had a limit right around 3.2. Well, I mean, some states had weird limits, too. I mean, I'll tell you, like, in the 90s, uh, my father lived in Florida. I lived there for a while in the 2000s. Um, we used to get the beer caps would either say AL for Alabama or FL for Florida. And I always just thought that meant, like, maybe they were made there or something like that. And my dad told me um, it was some of those southern states, again, which tend to be more religious in the U.S. and the northeast, the heathen states where I'm from. Um, and they had lower limits, so you had to have those caps to designate those beers might have a lower ABV in those states than they would in the other states. So, you know, kind of interesting backstory. Now, so this, for this beer, one of the things we thought was cool was, again, it's Salt Lake City, Utah, but it's 8% alcohol. Yeah, it's kind of neat considering the history. Artwork on this is pretty cool. It's got a little elephant on there, or maybe it's an... I don't know. Maybe it's not an elephant. Maybe you get sued. Maybe it's an elephant. Maybe you get sued if you have an elephant, right? Like they invented the animal. Carlsberg. It, it rubs me wrong. Carlsberg is absolute piss. I don't know who likes Carlsberg. It doesn't say Carlsberg. Nobody ever says Carlsberg. No, it could be anybody. It could be anybody. It could be Jan Carlsberg from Minnesota. We're not saying it's the crappy brewery, but it could be anybody. It could so, be any other brewery that has an elephant beer. <laughs> it could be. Listen, doesn't uh, Delirium Tremens as an elephant? Are you going to try to sue them? But it doesn't say, it's not, the beer's not called elephant. Fair enough. But it's el- Elephino, right? Let's give it a shot. D-I- Deepas are not my thing, double IPAs, but I'm, I'm rooting for this one, just on the backstory alone. Absolutely. So let's get into this Ratings beer. wise, untapped, 3.90. Beer Advocate, 393. Shockingly similar. That happens very rarely. 88, 88, very good. So let's give it a shot. Wait, we got to look at the head. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. You're getting way ahead of yourself. This head has been sticking around once again for our hmm. diatribe of nonsense. Yeah. Nice. And it's very pillowy, yeah. large, large bubbles. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's not what it was, obviously, but you've listened to us ramble. But it's Color-wise, still huge you get our Brew bubbles. HQ chart. It is pretty clear. I mean, there's a little bit of cloud to it, but it is pretty yeah, clear. for the most part clear. It's a tiny bit of murkiness a nice, to it. Nice yellow, like... See some nice fine bubbles. I would probably go five deep gold would be my guess. Deep gold. In these very classy jam jars. Now look... It's better than my iconic plastic hotel cup. Nothing's better than the iconic plastic hotel cup. We have one saved here. And my man, I'm going to ship it over to the Isle of Man. To my boy Slurpy Dave. <laughs> I'm going to have Anderson sign that shit. And we'll send it to you, my brother, with a beer. If we can get it through customs. Slurpy Dave is the one who started pointing out the jam jars. And I love his videos. If you haven't seen him, check out his channel. I'll throw up a thing. Slurpy Dave, Isle of Man beer reviews. Uh, he does jokes. He does tours of the Isle of Man, which I knew very little about. So I love watching him. All right, man. Ready? Let's give us a sniff. You know, I have to say, we've been joking around about the temperature in the beer shed. Mm. But now that your dog has opened that door. You can't feel your hands? It has gotten frigid in here. The beer's not warm. No, it is not. So back to the sniff. It's actually, I'm surprised because it's kind of got this adjunct smell to it. See, I'm picking up like a tropical kind of thing. Tropical note. Like a I'm picking up fruity like kind of thing. Adjunct. Really? I do get the, the, some fruitiness, but to, to me. the initial smell was kind of adjunct. What do you think Pablo Escobar would think if he saw us sniffing these beer jars? Wow, like that this? wind is super loud. Yeah. It's winter in the north, man. I, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the, the smell is, is not crazy. I think when I read it, it was saying tropical and piney. I don't know that I'm picking up pine notes, really. No. Um, I do get a little bit of a tropical fruity thing and maybe a bit of a something else. I, I don't know that I could put a finger on it and say what it is. No, but I do, like I said, I do get some adjunct to it. All right. What do you think of this? I'm going to bet on this. Do you think this is going to be like viscous and syrupy? No. All right. Let's see what else. I'm going to say this is watery. Really? Yes. Right, let's check it out. Cheers. That's like soap. Medium <laughs> body. It's odd. Oh, it's kind of weird. Yeah. I think on, on the nose, I picked up a little bit of a tropical thing. When you drink it, I think it's a bit more piney. It's very piney. It's very dry. The one thing I will say for a double IPA it is it's, not. it's not the big punch I was expecting. Um, you know, again, if you like um, big IPAs and videos like that, there are a lot of guys out there 
Um, you know, I'm friends with a number of beer reviewers. The one that comes to mind, Ridgeopolis, um, him, him and Ryan Bear, you know, Bear, they do a lot of big IPAs. They're fans of that style. It's not really my thing. So when I saw a double IPA, I'm like, hmm. Um, I don't think this is true double IPA. It doesn't mean that it's not good and it doesn't mean that I don't like it. It's just not what I thought it was going to be. Or to be the devil's advocate, maybe this is true double IPA and most double IPAs are ridiculous. Fair enough. Yeah, and yeah. people have just gone over the top. Because, this, I mean, this is hoppy. This is definitely an IPA. You know it's an IPA. Yeah, yeah. You pick up the hops. You know that it's there. It's But but as we've discussed many times, Medium lots body. of brewers, lots of people just hop the crap out of beers yeah. and call them double, triple, quad, sextillion IPA, whatever. That's an interesting one. And right? punch you in the mouth of IPA, and, yeah. and that's what they do. And maybe this could possibly be a, a good representation of a double IPA, but we've been so hammered with well, hops here's the thing. that we're not that, that, that you don't even know anymore. But, it, but it's difficult to even gauge it. Like, I know a lot of the dudes that, that are IPA guys who say, well, I can guess the IBUs and this and that. Um, that's not me. You know, I'm more of a malt dude. I'm, Morrison's my style, right? But I dig this. I dig this. Um, right. But it's got some nice bittering to it, some nice dryness to it. It has a malty backbone to it. I think you pick up the maltiness at, at first, and then it kind of goes to the hoppiness, which is more of a piney hop. Um, and I dig it. I, I, I like it. It's, it's more than, than Sierra Nevada. It's more than... Sierra, no, Sierra Nevada is just like a pale ale, but, which right. I do quite like. I which, which, like I, which I think is the iconic pale ale. And it's more than like the Lagunitas, yeah. well, which I think is an iconic IPA. That's the baseline. I mean, that's like the OG. That's the standard, right? And, and, and I think it's Sierra more than the Lagunitas, which is, which is a, I think, a good baseline for an IPA. It's I more than that. that. Yeah, it's yeah. more than that. Yeah, so maybe it is a good double, and maybe, but maybe it's not. And this is the hard part, right? Like, the way it should just be set up is doubles are between this and this. But, I mean, even IBUs are deceptive. IBUs are deceptive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's got to be some objective way to kind of measure. And, and the other thing is, I don't taste the alcohol. There's 8%? No, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't think There's no it. notion of alcohol in no, here. No, 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 no. You get like a, a like a, a light malty backbone, then it kind of goes to the piney hops, and, and that's kind of it, really. I mean, I don't, I don't notice a whole lot, a whole lot going on other than that. No, not at all. I mean, it's, this is a well-balanced... But here's the thing. I don't know that you need a hell of a lot more than that. No, you don't. It did what it's supposed to. It delivered. It's tasty. Exactly. It, it's a win for me. And this Ella is Fino is a win. And this is well ba- a well balanced beer. Yeah. For for what it's supposed to be for double IPA, I think it's very well balanced. It's not knock your socks off, punch you in the mouth IPA. Mm-hmm. You've got the good hops in there. You know, it's a hobby beer. Yeah. And <clears throat> it's shocking. That's an eight percent alcohol beer from Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah, that's cool. So for and, me, and, and for big, you, big thumbs up. What do you think? For me as well, it's a big thumbs up. I'm glad I found this beer. Glad I was able to uh, snatch it off the bus and bring it back in my 71 pound suitcase. This is the thing I love about when he travels. He goes to all these different cities and places and brings stuff back, and is kind enough to share it. So glad to have the Ginger Yeti back. If you want to see some of the stuff he did on the road, check out my playlist. Ginger Yeti Road Beers. Um, so, I'm guessing this came from a venue called The Complex. And anybody ever sees this, thank you, Complex, for uh, giving this to us. Yeah. Appreciate that. So you gave it a thumbs up? I gave it a Absolutely thumbs up? Absolutely big thumbs up. If big you like the video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this, please hit subscribe. And as always, if you got any comments or questions, jump in down below. If you've had this beer, can't imagine tons of people have, because uh, you, know, you don't see many Utah beers, at least here. And I don't know how many Utah viewers I have, but if you've had this, let me know what you think about it. Um, or are there some other Utah beers we should be looking for? You know, I love trying stuff from different states. We're fortunate here in Ohio. We're surrounded by good beer. We are. Michigan, Pennsylvania, um, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana has some, not a ton of breweries, but some stunners like right. the Floyd's. We're pretty lucky in the Midwest. we got a really good beer culture. Utah, maybe they do too. I just don't know about it. So if you're from Utah or that area, let me know what I should be looking for, man. Hey, till next time. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go sit by the fire and drink a beer. Till next time. I'm with that. Cheers.